embarrassing Chicago by 27. Boston's division best point differential clinched Group C, advancing them into the NBA Cup quarterfinals, where they'll take on Indiana. Improving to an undefeated NBA best 8-0 in front of their home fans, Drew Holiday being back helped him find a flow, but the Seas were still missing Chris Stapps Porzingis with a calf injury for the second consecutive outing. A classic first half Joe Missoula challenge on a JB block that he said was clean displayed the trust between this team's head coach and one of its top players as the challenge was successful. Resembling the top player on Tuesday, Jalen Brown's game high by far 30 points, where he also was a game high plus 22 fueled a massive bounce back effort for Boston. With the Celtics being forced to win by 23 in order to advance to the quarterfinals, continuing to beat down an already having folded Bulls team was necessary yet uncomfortable for the victors. Holiday and Brown voiced their displeasure with the tournament's point differential format. Drew would note the weirdness of having to disrespect your opponent in order to advance while Brown stated, quote-unquote, that's just not how the game's supposed to be played. Running up the score even forced Missoula to give opposing coach Billy Donovan an explanation about his hack a drumming strategy despite it being a blowout. Nonetheless, one of eight teams moving on to the knockout round quarterfinals, the Group C winning Cs were led by Jalen Brown's 60th career game with 30 plus points. Only Pierce and Tatum have more such outings since the year 2000. Given his games obviously based around athleticism, it's scary that when Brown's playing without any fear, Black Mamba style, he can be a deep range sniper as well. However, he is shooting just 10% on one dribble pull-up three-pointers specifically. Therefore, the Chicago defense will live with this solid Zach Levine contest, albeit resulting in a Brown make. On catch and shoots though, Brown's efficiency vamps to 39%, as off the decisive swing from Al, note how on the catch, Jalen has no second thought to trust his pristine lower base fundamentals as well as release point height to get it off, plus the amount of space between he and his defender. Based off his jump out of the gym hops, Brown becomes increasingly unstoppable when he's A, picking his spots effectively from deep, and just as crucially, B, letting his mechanics and flow of the game give him the proper amount of confidence. Mostly the issue for the uber-talented Brown is the focus level, and at times getting lost in the sauce during immensely pressure-filled moments. But don't let it slip, that as Drake once said, He's only 27, and he's only getting better. Drake may have hit a rapid decline after that lyric, but point is, I've still got hope for JB. Off multiple inverted triple threat jabs, it says a lot about his shooting talent at its best that the man's able to transition from that right into his leaning back high arc and release with Vooch's hand in his grill to knock it down. Another inverted jab on the catch, this time leads into an attack in which he draws Caruso and midair kicks it to Peyton Pritchard for the flame throwing. Crossing over on the move into the cornet screen and roll, this drawn double would see most fine cornet on the roll, but Brown has the vision to notice Carter and Levine lurking for a blitz on the back end, so instead, he spots Holiday for the tray. There it is. Setting up an eventual horns high low is the ever so popular around the NBA Chicago action. This iteration has Brown setting the pick for Pritchard and Horford faking the DHO to Pritchard before extending over the body of Vooch and spotting Brown on the back door. Gravity drawing from the post, a sweep through draws four bulls setting up a Derek White spot up, which is followed by a second backdoor cut leading to jam, as Brown, like he has all year, throws it down like it's a mini hoop. Having used the offseason for off-handed dribbling and finishing sessions instead of weighted pool workouts, Jalen's polished ambidextrousness allow him to fend off the contact of Kobe, then duck in and around his contest with that left. That allows Brown to fake an attack to that side right here, as a hezzy and instead momentum cross right get him the angle on DeMar DeRozan for DeAnne 1. Transition from drive to post up, left handed dribble back down, Hakeem shimmy and follow through on the fade net him the J over Kobe. For allowing Brown to thrive to the highest capacity, give credit to the playbook implementation and variation, plus pushing of the pace point of emphasis from the coaching staff. On a coach of the year type trajectory, how Joe and his staff of Charles Lee, Sam Cassell, Tony Dobbins, Emile Jefferson, DJ Mackley, and Matthew Reynolds game plan for Indiana will be make or break and interesting to watch. Godfather Al Horford, 
became the oldest player to post at least 16 points, 9 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals, 3 blocks, and 4 threes. Another beastly performance from the veteran Phenom consisted of him doing quite literally everything, as Al is one of the most versatile bigs in the game with his two-way perimeter and inside repertoire. With 500k on the line to each player, that money would mean everything to a guy like Uncle Sam Hauser, who continued to display his underrated hops, flying in from out of nowhere for the unexpectedly few and far between putback, maxing out the vibes. With Drew Holiday back, the defense and offensive organization flowed a lot smoother. An additional 4 triples leading to 14 points to go along with 9 dimes and a steal was just the production Boston was missing when the 2021 NBA champion was out. With Holiday Man in the backcourt, there was such a drastically less amount of pressure on the Jays, and that was evident in the final game of group play to the fullest degree. With Drew activated, in terms of the remaining inactive list, the injured Chris Daps Porzingis stated on air that he'd be back quote-unquote very soon, potentially indicating he'll make it in time for the quarterfinals against the Tyrese Halliburton-fueled Pacers, which isn't until December the 4th. A good sign was Porzingis warming up before the game against Chicago, signaling his time off could be somewhat precautionary. Nonetheless, wishing a speedy recovery to the unicorn. Last week, when Orlando was running up the score to try and clinch the group, Jason Tatum would state post-game that he isn't a fan of point differential. As you heard earlier, Holiday and Brown also both feel that way, meaning how committed this team is to win an inaugural tournament without any history behind it, of course, is tough to gauge. But of course, there's no excuses in this business, as we know how Boston's last do-or-die game went against Miami in this past spring's conference finals. Tatum rolled his ankle in the opening frame, and the Heat ended up smacking them by 19. My question is, and I want to know in your opinion, will we see that same Boston squad that squandered in the moment against Miami, or a new level of togetherness? Best answer down below in the comments section earns next video's commenter shoutout, and the top 5 commenters by the end of the year earn free merch of their choosing, so make sure to leave your take on today's question to compete in Community Speaks. Shout out to Triple T, who says I'm a Laker fan and I F with Max Christie, but other Laker fans do overrate his potential, but I do see him as a slightly taller KCP. That's not a bad player at all. Not every single player we bring on this team needs to have these all-star or superstar level expectations because that's not realistic. Appreciate that take and every answer. Deflo signing off.